Benny, bring me everyone. What do you mean everyone? Everyone! I have come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. Barry Manilow know that you raid his wardrobe? Let me explain something to you. Um, I am not Mr. Lebowski. You're Mr. Lebowski. I'm the dude. No one is to stone anyone until I blow this whistle. You can't fight in here. This is the war room. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Have a, have a. Hello and welcome to Zito's Gang, episode number. I don't fucking know, seriously. I mean, when was the last time I actually knew the episode number, eh, Ken? <laughs> uh, I don't know. We, I think, I don't I think, think about 112, something like that. 12, I, you think? Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting We're, for Joe to give me a number. I asked him, but he hasn't come back to me with a number. Oh, man, we got, we got to take bets on this. We got to take bets <laughs> on this. Maybe next week I'll get it right. Who knows? But and introduce no, the show more professionally and properly but i doubt it but we'll see we'll see um but yeah today i'm joined by as always ken and that bullet now you kind of become a regular fixture now so like I every, know, every podcast it. yeah i'm liking it that's good that's good and then of course we got we got two of our regulars that well that come every you guys have done more than one podcast we got yep. salman the great and amrita the magnificent there we go oh. <laughs> I know. i'll take it thanks cool and we're on the way so yeah got a couple of trailers and stuff comeback trail with robert de niro and morgan freeman and did i spy zach braff from scrubs in there yeah that's it yeah Yeah. he's a co-star man it's him and And tom Tom lee jones tom lee jones and it's like jones you know so that um, oh yeah, Emil Hesh, yeah. yeah, yeah. That kid, that kid. Just, you know what? I'm gonna say this straight. He was personally my first choice for Spider Man, like since day one. Ever really? since watching the boy next door, no, the girl next door, I was like, he should be Peter Parker. Yeah, right. I can definitely like, understand why. Yeah, him. and like, like, and you know what's, you know what's great about him? He still looks 14 years old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why do you think they Good cast way. him a speed racer? <laughs> the man doesn't age. He doesn't age at all. He doesn't, man, and he's like 40, right? <laughs> so, I mean, something like that, yeah. He must be 40, but he looks 14. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, um, comeback trail. You know what? I really dug this trailer. I thought it was really fun. And I, you know what? You can tell De Niro was actually enjoying what he was doing yeah. because mm. he's actually playing like a bumbling kind of character. Mm. And we haven't seen him like really like stretch those acting chops to another kind of persona. He's always kind yeah. of playing a version of a different role that he played in his heyday and all like a serious kind of guy. But seeing him all bumbling and stuff, I was just like, oh man, that makes me happy. It looks it looks good. It had a different energy. And what was really cool was like, um, I got that off of Morgan Freeman because he's playing like some bad mobster. And I was like, damn, okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> I was like, damn, cool. You know what I really want to see? I'm going to throw it back to Spider-Man again. Whoever watched <laughs> all the electric company adverts back in the 70s and stuff, where they'd have Spider-Man in a suit and he'd speak in speech bubble and shit it was like an 80s skit and there was always a cop and the cop was this black cop and you know what it only took me like i don't know two years ago i rewatched these old sketches because they showed up on my youtube page because i was like obviously googling whatever fucking spider-man and it showed up i was like i remember those sketches and you know who the cop was morgan fucking freeman and i'm like why is morgan freeman mcu he should show up he should play a cop and it should be the same cop from the 70s boom anyway (laughs) ken's ken's a spider-man fan he doesn't know what the fuck i'm talking about check that that shit out now on fucking youtube it's gold it's gold it's like spider-man like if he's like a kid's but like obviously there was no like film version of Spider-Man back then. So he was like a kid's uh, TV kind of persona. And when he spoke, he spoke and it will have like the comic bubble. Right. And then like right. Morgan, F- Morgan Freeman would just show up as a cop going, hey, Spider-Man, how you doing? I'm like, he looks like a young Morgan Freeman. Oh, wait, it is a young Morgan Freeman. And Morgan Freeman starred oh, Spider-Man and Batman. <laughs> yeah, see? Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah, back back to the, this. The, yeah, this trailer gave me happy vibes because it's a comedy. We haven't seen some. I, I feel it's been refreshing that we haven't seen a mm. comedy like this in a while. I like the premise. Tommy Lee Jones is just giving me joke, just being yes. really serious and gruff. Yeah. And um, yeah, um, what, what are your thoughts, guys? 
Yeah, I thought the trailer was fantastic. It kind of gave me a little bit of an Argo vibe. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, from I can that see point that. of view, yeah. um, it's a, it's a remake. Um, so, uh, oh, really? Okay. Yeah, Harry Her um, Harry Hurwitz. Uh, he directed it back in 1982. Uh, if you look at the credit title on this one, it says based on uh, Harry Hurwitz's film as well. So they okay. credited him in, in that as well. Um, I, I, you know what? I'm sensing. Um, a, you know, award nominations here, you know, in terms of that, you know, you know, especially really? if it comes to, yeah, I think Golden Globe, something like that, you know, I could see, I could see De Niro or something like that, just like um, best supporting actor in a, in a comedy or musical, you know, or something like that. Um, if you think of like what The Martian was up for when that was around awards mm -hmm. season and stuff like that. Yeah, I've mm -hmm. got some vibes where I think there's a few performances in here that, you know, could, could go to award season. I think it is a little bit like that. Zach Braff, um, we haven't seen a lot of him lately. You know, he often tries to do his own projects. So actually I was looking to see, is he writing this? Is he co-writing it? But he's just starring in it. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, I think that gives him a bit more free reign because normally he's got two or three roles on a film that he's doing. Um, but yeah, I, I got good advice on this. I really, really enjoyed the trailer, and yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if th this was playing around award season from particular performances. I know it's a comedy, but yeah, because I got that Argo. You're vibe. not comedies. Yeah, because I got that Argo vibe. That's that's how I'm feeling with it. Mm. I sort of felt like it kind of, uh, you know, that movie that with uh, what's his name? Um, oh my God, who was in Gladiator? Who was that guy? Russell, Russell Crowe? Crow? Yes, Russell Crowe. <laughs> His movie recently that he did with, uh, oh man, my brain just completed that today. What was the one the cop, the, the, he was playing mm -hmm. it with, uh, the, the other guys? The nice, nice guys, guys, that's it. Nice guys. It kind of made me feel like that sort of thing, like the early 90s, late 80s movies, you know, John. Well, where it was kind of, Oh, where it's kind of quirky kind of comedies where like the script's on point and the premise yeah. is good and 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 films are actually made kind of decent rather than like on a fucking conveyor belt it, yeah totally no <laughs> then all, 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 all the characters are lively you know they're all jumpy yeah. and they're all doing something they're not just there to fill the scene you know they're not yeah, just there sure. to say it like and bugger off now they're there and they're part of something even tiny ones but still there they kind of gave me the feeling of that and i like i like the uh, in the trailer the to and fro between morgan freeman and uh, robert de niro and that yeah. kind of gave me the same feeling as all those movies that i grew up on really so i'm really looking forward to it i mean it should yes. be fun i hope yeah, it's fun now that you say to it it does have kind of like that get shorty kind of vibe Exactly. Yes, and indeed. like if anyone knows me that's like one of my favorite films of all time that's like actually my favorite john travolta film like uh, yeah. for real like i love him it's chili palmer man that that whole film <laughs> is fucking jokes mm. <laughs> i think it looks amazing as well my my whole vibe is you guys have mentioned some great 70s films that it picks up on i mm. also got once upon a time in hollywood weirdly yeah that same it's obviously yeah. the era but i feel yeah I don't know, i'm kind of drawn in and i like the whole Tommy Lee Jones, just you know, how many ways can we try and kill him? <laughs> I'm down for that. I think you'll, yeah, it kind of reminded me of the big hit, you know what I mean? Yeah, you, you exactly. yeah, 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 I know yeah. the big hit, the, the, yeah, but all trying to, you know, what, what it called, the abduction of the little kid and they're all messing around and they're all messing up, kind of mm. gave me that feeling. I, I think I like those films simply because I was like a teenager then and movies were like a dear thing to you, you know. Yeah. You know, I'm so glad you mentioned the big hit, man. That's one film everyone should see, man. That's oh. Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch at his best. Agreed. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Love that film. Amazing. Okay. I think it's just, it's a nice vibe in this trailer that it seems like everyone, yes, it's an ensemble cast. And I know, critically speaking, a lot of people are like, oh, well, those films will never do well. But I mm. actually agree with Ken that I think there, there may well be some award nods in this. And I think you can just tell that they have done it all in a way that they are enjoying it as well. So I think mm. they're probably all just signing on because they wanted to be around yeah. like Tommy Lee and people like this, Morgan Freeman. Yeah. You know Actually, what, yeah, Russell, I mean, sorry, go on Ed. Actually, I was just going to mention that Russell Crowe recently came on one of the, you know, the Ali Plume, is it? The guy on BBC who does these uh, small interviews before the mm. movie's come out. Yeah. Is it yeah. Plum? Is it Plume? I can't, I'm not I can't too anyway. sure of his name, but I know who you're on about. You know what yeah. I mean, right? So, he, First of all, went out of his way and said, I really wanted to do a second part, a second one for the nice guys. It was just that pandemic and multiple things happened and it sort of were shelved, the idea. 
but he mm -hmm. was hoping that that comes back again because again like what Samrita mentioned it was a fun job to do sort of a thing and we all enjoyed watching it as well yeah you can tell when there's a film being put together by people that don't really care mm -hmm. and that are kind of doing it for a paycheck or just because they think you know that this is going to really elevate my career but they don't actually care about the process involved mm -hmm. and then you can tell with a film like this where every probably every single person on set is just really excited to turn up every day yeah and it yeah. does change the way you see it as an audience so yeah. i'm really excited i can't wait yeah also, so like the fact that it didn't show that much of the film it just showed mm. one small yeah i mean the, dir part of the, it. the director himself hasn't got like a lot of a lot of credits um but he did um he did uh, he was in a film with morgan freeman before um what was it called? Uh, the one with John, uh, was with John Travolta as well. One that came out recently, a couple of years ago. Yeah, um, like yeah. Um, and but he's done a lot of writing credits. So like he he's, he's down for uh, ba Bad Boys, Bad Boys Two, Bad Boys Three, um, uh, based on characters he created. So he did a story for the first one, uh, the whole Ten Yards. Um, mm. So you know he's been around for a little. That's while. the writer, right? That's the yeah, writer. Uh, the, he's the director, but he was did writing for those movies. So yeah, so he's been around a little while, but um, yeah, it's, you know, he's seen, he's also wrote uh, Wise Guys with like Danny DeVito. Mm. Um, mm. So yeah, so he's been around a long time, um, but he just hasn't got that many directing credits. So you know, he's obviously got. A, normally he's a writer, so now that he's you know he's got a story from somebody else, he's focused on the directing, and um, yeah, I, I think I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Let's hope. <laughs> mm. hey, next film we have The Doorman. Mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Batwoman herself, Ruby Rose. And you know what? I was really more attached to this trailer because my man Leon showed up in here. Mm -hmm. yes. know? And you know oh, what? It's like, and it just felt like a breath of fresh air and seeing him back because mm -hmm. I haven't seen him in a hot... I know he's been doing a lot of French films lately yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, he's a huge French star, but like... I just feel like Hollywood has kind of missed him because when I saw him, I felt happy. I was like, I was like, there, there could be two ways. He's either a jokey person or people are about to get fucked up. And yeah. I don't know because like, I don't know which one he is because like, I think he came across as a mad guy in this trailer, but you know, what? I was just happy to see him. Um, yeah. Ruby Rose, I, you know what? Yeah. She gets a lot of flack and that's mainly, but you know, and I've not seen the Batwoman because it's not, you know, I don't like any CW superhero thing. That's just my, you know, Ken knows this. It's just my, just not my forte. But you know what? Like, I liked her in John Wick. I liked her in all the films that she's done. So I'm kind of looking forward to see her kick some ass in this because she's a good fighter. So I don't get where, why all the hate is there. But, you know, I'm not going to judge her off the of Batwoman, that's for sure. So <laughs> I hope not because if, has anybody here seen Batwoman? Uh, I saw no. her in the crossover episodes, uh, but not the, her own series. Well, the crossover episodes were the best episodes of that series, because I watched that series, and unfortunately, it's horrifically bad. I mean, it's what? so bad that even they said that they're going to change the person. I thought, if they don't change writers and other people produced on that show, it's not going to do anything. I mean, mm -hmm. that show is unbelievably shit. <laughs> I, mean, it's that's a th I can't imagine that it would be bad because she's bad. I feel like no, it, it has nothing to do with her. As well. Nothing to yeah. do with her. You can tell it's um, half-assed done. Uh, production is badly done. Editing is yeah. sometimes off. Um, but the writing is, I mean, like, let's put it this way. You have no idea where they're going. Literally no clue. Mm -hmm. Every episode is beyond boring. But that said, about this movie, though, Kai, I hope it's good. I hope it's one of those action flicks that you go and watch, you know, popcorn movies, let's put it that way, that you can go and have fun and watch. And I do love uh, Jean Renault. I haven't seen him in a long, long time. So that should be. I'm hoping. I'm crazy excited for this. I'm not going to lie. Bit of girl power. I'm never going to say no to that. But I also just think if you're going to have a female centric John Wick style action film, probably the best chick to do it would be someone like Ruby Rose because the girl kicks ass. I mean, you just look at her and you're going to be like, okay, there's going to be blood at some point coming. And I, I don't know. I feel like she's she's got the gravitas to bring the entertainment as well not just the good fighting but i think she's actually going to be fun to watch as well and i like the premise like i like these uh like situational films where it's one setting and you're kind of thrown in the midst of all of this action going wild so i can't wait but 
Jean Reno definitely as a French person, half French person. I can't wait to see him back in Hollywood again. Um, and I hope that there's some kind of like Leon vibes going as well. We'll see. I don't know, but I'm excited. Um, I can't say I was impressed with this one. Um, I, was, no! I just, it's, it's, I just felt like I'd seen it all before. Um, yeah, I could see that. So that it's, I mean, it's a remake anyway. Again, um, but it, it just felt like a diehard. You know, it's yeah. a situation in a building. <laughs> You know, she's working her way through the building to get to the bad guy. Um, yeah, I haven't seen, you know, I loved her, uh, Ruby Rose, in Orange is the New Black. Um, yeah. you know, I loved her character in that. Um, like I say, Batman, uh, sorry, Batwoman, she was playing in the crisis. She was fine in that. But yeah, again, I just wasn't drawn into that series. And obviously now she's left that as well. Um, I'm not sure she's quite got the star power yet to hold a movie. So you can see why they've gone with um, a bigger name for the baddie. Mm. Um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I, yeah, I just don't think this is going to do that well. I mean, in terms of um, uh, uh, Jean Reno, you know, he's, uh, he's, uh, he was actually in uh, Die Hard, you know, the... Um, oh, oh, the John Travolta, Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart thing, yeah. So he's, he's, thing, in, yeah. he's in a lot of that as well. He was in uh, The Five Bloods. Um, so he's, he's been he's been in a few things recently. Um, so he's kind of doing it like you said. He's when did loads of stuff in France. He's coming back and doing more of the American stuff at the moment. Um, but yeah, just yeah, she, nothing draws me into Ruby Rose at the moment. There's just nothing there for me to kind of get excited about with her. Um, you but, know what they should have done with this movie? They should have filmed it like the fucking raid. If Ruby Rose yeah. had like taken someone out and like Robert Patterson in that Batman trailer, the whole world would be watching that a little differently. Yeah, there, there was yeah. yeah. exactly. So she was just fighting multiple people in this. So it was showing her yeah. multiple fighting skills, which is fine. But yeah. there wasn't that moment where I was like, oh, you yeah. know, which will kind of draw you. Because you want to, because with, with action films, these days, John Wick was yeah. the one chosen, right? Yeah, yeah, she was, yeah, yeah, that's right. But with action films, I feel that if it's not raw, it's just generic, mm -hmm. if that yeah. makes sense. If it's not filmed like the old school style, guerrilla then style. it's just ju then it's just not guerrilla style. Um, how they did in the 80s and the 90s where you could see the action. Because okay. I think, I personally think um, Jason Bourne was a blessing and a curse, okay? Because what yeah. it did, what it did, they used the shaky camera thing and they created a new style in action filmmaking. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, Hollywood looked at it and then they were like, oh, and all our action films should be filmed this way. So mm -hmm. what they did, they started doing that with, well, Hollywood in general just started doing that with all their films, making them 12 A's rather than films that would rather be 15s or 18s. Um, obviously to cover up the violence mainly. And then basically, um, what happened was action films, Hollywood action films, just start to look all the same again. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's why when you have something like John Wick, where it goes back to the old school style of shooting, it feels mm -hmm. a lot more refreshing because you can see all that um, martial art choreography and stuff, um, all to good measure. And then that's when, you know, whenever you get a film like, um, like Netflix did a film this year called Extraction with... Uh, Chris, uh, Chris Hemsworth. Hemsworth. It's actually yeah, a really good film. And you know what? Um, I, I thought it was a good film. I know some people didn't like it, but I, I felt for me as an action movie junkie, it showed me shit that I've never seen before in an act, from an action picture in the way the cinematography was. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. And I just feel like, um, like the first time I saw the Raid trailer, I knew oh. I wanted to see that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean was just when I saw, it and it goes, it goes to the Batman trailer as well. The Batman, Robert Patterson had a lot to prove. You know mm. what I mean? And that I've trailer, not seen the trailer. Oh, mate, mate. I'm not going to. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Play, fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. All I'm going to say in that trailer, anyone that thought he couldn't make a good Batman half of them shut the fuck up. Mm. Like, literally. Mm. Half of them shut the fuck up. There's still people going, eh, but you know what? Fuck those people, because I'm sold. I'm in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, totally. I'm in. And it's quite yeah. literally like, um, I just feel gen the generic action picture these days just doesn't cut it. You know what I mean? Because I think 
people that are into that genre know what they're looking for from an action picture. Yeah. Yeah. But for me, like I said before, despite me saying all of that, I think I was just high because John, John Reno was there, <laughs> you know, because it was like this old school guy I hadn't seen in films for ages. I didn't know he was in the five bloods and I still haven't seen that yet. And that gives me more of a reason to go watch it now. So yeah, I guess like my issue with this film is not the fact that it's an action film and all of that, although all of your points are valid yeah. and I can see the points, but I think I'm still excited to watch it at the end of the day. Mm. And my oh, yeah. issue is more that I wish that she, that Ruby Road, Road, Rose had a film that was more, characterful actually giving her something she could put her teeth into oh, because yeah. you've mentioned ken earlier orange is the new black mm -hmm. she is fantastic in that and she has a character that is different to what we've seen her play before yeah and she shone in it because it was different and it was real and it was gritty i would love to see her do things like that more than yeah. just be like the token action chick well that's it because yeah because the next movie coming up um is um sas red notice uh, and that's yes. again it's a small army of well-trained criminals you know it's, it's got tom yeah. hopper andy circus um hannah john Kamen, uh or carmen uh tom wilkinson you know so it's got, it's got a few names in there um mm. and but then then after that and that's going to be interesting is um the longest night um oh so that is with uh, Morgan Freeman, um, okay. and basically, but it's it's like a kidnapping type movie. Another or remake. Thriller. There's there are like two other Longest Nights. Yeah. Yes. So this is an action crime thriller. So this is like um, blackmail, kidnapping kind of thing. So it's might it depends if it's going to be action. You know, it might be action as well. And Morgan Freeman is that he's in it for like ten minutes you know, to sell, to sell the film so, yeah. um, because there's not many, but there's not much else in there. So it just seems that she's very much going through that action thing. And I'm just like, yeah, we'd like to see something a little different from you. Yeah. I think maybe she loves doing that. She oh, probably does. Oh, she's getting paid. I hope night, that. She's getting paid. Yeah. The night has been directed by the same guy as, uh, it's the same dude as, uh, what's it called? The, uh, a Janeiro movie that we just looked at. Oh, well, The Longest Night. Yeah. Yeah. George Gallo. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the comeback trail. Okay. Yeah. What was gonna say? Have you? He's got a relationship guys... with Morgan Freeman. That's like three movies. Uh, have you guys seen Dark Matter the TV show? No. No. All right. I love that show because I'm a big sci-fi fan. Anyway, Ruby Rose is in one of the episodes. This is the first, I think, acting job she's actually done. Let's say outside Australia, because mm -hmm. it was way before she did Orange is the New Black. Mm -hmm. And in that, she plays a sneaky kind of what I call role, which is that she comes and as an android and you find out something else later on and that is actually a pretty good job she's done if you guys want to see something a little different from her you can look up that episode maybe i'm looking it up now because it's something that rings a bell but i don't think i've seen it yet oh right if you guys have amazon right now or not even amazon actually you can watch it for free on plex you can just download that app on your phone it's free mm -hmm. yeah and it's all free the whole amazon. <laughs> there you go so yeah if you want to watch that on there you can i think the whole series is there for free let me just check. I'm my f it is Plex, yeah. <laughs> just looked it up my TV right now. Anyway, so yeah, that's just, that's one of those cool TV shows. It ended too early. Anyway, back to you. Okay, so next trailer we have the Babysitter Killer Queen. You know what? I haven't even seen the first one. I didn't oh, even know I... there was a first one. <laughs> Has anyone I remember seen it? Seeing, I remember seeing the big screen advert on Netflix. You know, when you log in, it's like this is yeah. something new. Oh, I just uh, really went for it. There are a lot of names in this. That, okay, am yeah. I correct? In no one see, no one seen the first one. No, never no. heard of it. It looks wow. fun, to be fair, because I don't yeah. think saw the trailer for the first one. But this looks kind of goofy, kind of fun. So yeah. Yeah. it looks like the kind of film I would see with some friends on possibly a drunken sleepover. <laughs> yeah, and Definitely. never on my own, and never on my wish list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of names on this, but yeah, it, it's, it kind of reminded me of that. I mean, I haven't seen the show yet, but that's all the trailer. This on uh, what I call Netflix, so I think it's Teenager Killers or something. Mm. Kind of reminded me of that, but I saw the trailer of that too. I haven't seen the show mm. or movie. It's been it directed by Terminator Salvation and T Charlie's Angels McG. Yeah, McG. Um, mm. I see he did the first one as well, so he wrote yeah, he and did. directed them. So 
Interesting. I mean, like, you know what? McGee gets a bad rap, I think, because he took that Terminator gig and people give Salvation such a harsh ride. I, I actually didn't mind Salvation because it's the only one that had the balls to do something different. Mm-hmm. And for me, I like the fact that it wasn't overly heavily on CGI. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, it had CGI mm-hmm. in it, but it kept in vain of what one and two was with more practical kind of effects. Mm-hmm. And um, I think I think he just had you know a bad script and did the best that he could with it and now he just seems to be locked in this movie jail kind of thing where he's doing all this smaller lower budget kind of stuff maybe he likes doing it i don't know but like i know he was attached to the master of the universe at one point and i was like he's like when he came to comic-con talking about terminator salvation you kind of got what his persona was like Mm -hmm. and he's a proper Mm -hmm. fanboy like he's a geek you know like us that are into like comic book culture and stuff and the stuff that he was referencing i could tell he was genuinely trying to make terminator work if that makes sense Mm -hmm. and i was just like wow well i hope his masters of the universe works out because i'd love to see that because when he was pitching masters of the universe i was like yeah that sounds like he man to me but (laughs) never came never came to be so you know um but interesting interesting it depends if the vibe is going to be do you guys remember the film ready or not Ready or not, ready or not, which one? Oh, the, like, the one with the girl. If you get and married, the, you're yeah, part of the yeah, family yeah. cult type of. Yeah, yeah that one, yeah, mm-hmm. that was good. So, yeah, it was actually, I thought it was going to be like a really stupid bring dead film, but it was actually very entertaining. If this is going to be similar in tone to that, mm-hmm. then I'll, I'd be down. But if it's going to be just stupid, like nonsense cinema, then I don't know. Like, there's, you know, unless I'm drunk on a night sleepover, yeah. it's just not going to happen. Okay, I'm next. not sure, really sure I'm going to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next up, come play trailer. Um, this one was kind of freaky, man. It was creepy. It was very creepy. I mean, yeah. like, I guess it's coming at the kids' angle, and that's what creeped me out a little bit. But yeah. then I, think I it's don't. A, it's I, like it's hard seeing kids scared on screen like that because it's like, mm. you know, it's fair play to Ms. Axis because it's just like. Is it's convincing, you know, and it's just mm. like it's like I'm feeling for them more. Uh, if it was adults, it probably it just wouldn't have the same vibe. Yeah, I guess. But I mean, um, I think that's what makes it. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's what yeah. makes it by having it like with kids. I mean, this is a f- this is the first feature by the director Jacob Chase. He wrote and directed it. He's done mm. a lot of short short films and stuff. I think um, now that I know that's his first film, I could see the one environment being the family house and stuff and shooting with kids yeah. and stuff. That, yeah. that kind of works. And you know what? I like the concept. It's, um, it, I like the concept, to be quite honest. This yeah. kid's finding like an imaginary friend that's like actually wants to play with him, but it's kind of like creeped out. Um, mm. What creeped me out the most is the Slender Man kind of aspect to it. Because when I yeah. saw it, I was like, oh my God, is that Slender Man? Shit. But, sure, um, yeah. And you know they're taking that technology, you know, so yeah. you know make kids afraid to use their mobiles. I like it, man. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe maybe that's how parents could like stop kids from being on the tablet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Parenting yeah. one hundred and one, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, show, just show them the film. <laughs> it did. I have to say, yeah, I agree. It looks super, super creepy. I think um, I'm excited as well. What's her name? The girl who's in it, who was in like Community and. The Julian. Um, yeah, J- Jillian Jacobs. Is Jacobs, it? exactly. Jillian Jacobs. I'm excited to see her in a role that's not comedy. So I'm, I'm intrigued. But I also think the fact that the kid is autistic as well. Oh, I pulled on my heartstrings. Mm, but I just, yeah. it's gonna be exciting because I'm still not convinced after watching the trailer that this uh, entity is actually evil. Maybe he really does just want a friend. Mm. I don't even know. But. It looked good, and it reminded me of like a sinister version of A Monster Calls, if anyone's seen that. Oh, that film mm. is so sad. It's really sad, but it was, <laughs> so it was based on a book by Patrick Ness, which I love, mm. but the, um, the story of like this monster that comes to life is, is something that tr- reminded me of this. And I think the way that they, the book is illustrated reminded me of how he sees it on his um, iPad or whatever he's using in a similar way and the illustrations were similar and it reminded me a bit of the Babadook as well so I'm I'm intrigued mm. for sure okay next up we have okay 
I can't pronounce this. Can you guys pronounce this? Ammonite? Ammonite. I think Ammonite? Ammonite. Yeah, Ammonite. 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 Yeah, I usually, I'm the King Butcher of names, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Ammonite, directed by Francis Lee, or the acclaimed Francis Lee, that mm-hmm. has only done one film before this, so I wonder how good that film was. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, that sounded really, really bad. Um, <laughs> Kate Winslet, Kate Winslet is in this. Um, yeah, interesting trailer. Sasha Look at like, it's not, it's not, yeah, the girl from Hannah, right? Original Hannah, not yeah, yeah. TV, not yeah, TV Hannah, Hannah yeah. film Hannah. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. yeah um, not really my cup of tea, to be honest, unless like I actually sit down and watch it and be like, oh yeah, that was kind of cool. You know what I mean? But um, what did mm-hmm. you guys think? I can't really tell what the movie is about, really. I mean, I yeah. sort of get it, but yeah, not really. I yeah, it's, watch it. it's about building a relationship at that time. So I think it's, you know, um, he won, you know, she's um, like an archaeologist, it seems like, uh, in mm-hmm. some sense. And yeah. so then she takes her on as an apprentice. Reluctantly, they form a, a love relationship. And probably it's about the world accepting them, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. It's the time period that it's set in. Um, it's like 1840s, 1850s, yeah. something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, look, it's got, it's got some fantastic cast in it um, in terms of Kate Winslet and... Um, Oh, what's the name? Is it Saoirse Ronan? Yeah, oh. yeah, I can't remember her name now. It's, it's, it's... Saoirse Ronan, right? Is that the one you're looking for? Which yeah, one? Yeah, it is. Saoirse, Saoirse Ronan. Ronan. Yes. Gemma Jones. Um, yeah, exactly. Fiona Shaw. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll have to say we, yeah. It's very arty. It's very film festival, isn't it? So, um, so yeah. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I think it reminded me like a lot of a of a character type of film that they probably wanted to do it for the characters and for doing something different because as yeah. far as I know, I don't think either of them has played like a, a kind of lesbian relationship in any film, I don't think. So I think for them, it's this probably, you know, an interesting actor's role, mm-hmm. but I don't know necessarily that the story is one that's going to be that interesting. Not in today's yeah. day and age, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Ronan, she was fantastic in Lady Bird and she has, she's mm. kind of got that face and, you know, character where she can do the time period stuff because she did like Mary Queen of Scots, uh, Little Women, Women, you know. So, yeah. So, she, you know, she's definitely kind of got a face and, you know, that character ability to, to pass to that. Um, I think she's a fantastic actress and, you know, Kate mm. Winslet rarely puts a foot wrong. So. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Agreed. <laughs> Could be acting okay. nominations. Could be acting nominations. Yeah. Could be. I mean, I don't know. We'll see. Well, with so many little amount of movies coming out these days, probably is. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, you know, I mean, the award goes to. I mean, award. really, I would say, Sasha, come up with a short right now because there are like 10 people who made shorts. Yeah. You probably could win an Oscar for that. I'm not joking. I don't, I don't know about that, man. Trust me, I've gone down that route, and there's a lot of people trying to make all these isolation shorts at the moment. So um, it's going to oh, be you, or it's going to be the babysitter staged? club, Killer Queens. Yeah. Okay. Um, who's seen was... Staged? <laughs> Have you guys seen Staged? Staged. Staged. No. No? no? Oh, you guys got to watch Staged. It's on Netflix and on BBC iPlayer. Uh, Michael Sheen and David Tennant. Oh, I do love Michael Sheen. There you go. Mm-hmm. Watch Netflix one because that has additional scenes that the BBC that one doesn't. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Hey, go on, Sasha. Well, Mon's tip of the day. I like it. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, next film, next film of the day, or topic of the day, is Grizzly 2. <laughs> a film I never heard of ever before until yesterday where it was like this sounds right up my alley it's basically a grizzly bear film like Jaws really they should have called it Paws really I mean like come on man but, I mean I mean, so like it's Jaws but with Get grizzly bears with mm-hmm. grizzly bears so the original grizzly came out in the 70s late 70s 70, yeah, 79 or something yeah. or 76 76. just after just after Jaws, because it was a ripoff, but with a grizzly bear in the woods. So there was a sequel that 
that was shot in 1983. It even had a trailer. Mm-hmm. It star what's it? It stars um, well, two people. I don't know who the main leads are, but um, John Rice Davis. He's also one of the leads. Um, the guy that played Gimli from Lord of the Rings and okay. uh, Salah from the Indiana Jones films. Um, so yeah, he he was probably the biggest name that I knew from the main cast, but. Also in the cast, it has a young George Clooney, Charlie Sheen, and Laura Dern. Mm-hmm. Um, so this film, it had some financial issues. One of the producers, he, um, he owed a lot of money to comedian Jerry Lewis, and it looks like he owed a lot of people money, but the film couldn't really have the budget to finish it. its effects work, and it kind of went into movie jail. Like they didn't even release it or even try to finish it and stuff. Yeah, the producer but, went off with the money basically, and then he got thrown in prison yeah. for tax fraud. So there we go. And um, yeah, so they never finished it. But now, thanks to like film fans across the globe, we've managed to restore this this movie and see whether it's truly a sequel worthy of the original. Um, <laughs> funnily enough, I never even heard of the original. I haven't really heard of this film, but. You know what? There was a remake that came out back in 2014 with Thomas Jane and James Marsden and Billy Bob Thornton and uh, I don't know who else was in there. And I had no clue, like, if yeah, that was even a reboot. Or something, yeah. But you know what? I didn't even know about that reboot. I didn't even know about these films. But you know what? Jaws, but a bear, I'm in. I want to see that film. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, the, the, you can, yeah, you can, the, the trailer's out for it and... Oh my God, it looks awful. Oh, geez. Uh, but, oh geez. Uh, but you know what? It's awful in a cheesy, funny no, way. That's the, no, that's the, really that is my, mate, that's my favorite kind of movie. Seriously, I love films like that. You know why? They're fun. Yeah, I mean, if you see, if you see the grizzly in the thing, it, oh, it's just it's so bad. So basically, yeah, so like you had the first one and then, like you said, they were filming the second one. It was called Grizzly 2 Revenge. It was called Grizzly 2 The Predator. Um, or Grizzly 2 the concerts so there's like loads of names so basically very it's like the first one was set in like a like a park ranger situation so they had a park ranger chasing down this um, bear the second one is they're trying to hold a concert um, nearby and the, there's this bear attacks going on and the people who are running the concert don't want to close it down for losing money so that kind of the, the beach thing with Jaws you know it's like opening the yeah. beach, opening the beach. Mm-hmm. so yeah it's very much like that and um and yeah then it's you know, down to these guys trying to take on this bear and oh sweet jesus i mean i guess the, <laughs> i guess what we'll see in this is like um charlie sheen and george Clooney and stuff probably just get killed but i know that the person who's been right putting this film together um they have they've obviously tried to up those characters parts in the film by re-editing it to mm-hmm. use obviously their the commercial appeal now and stuff like that but um, yeah, I mean, 40 years after the original, I mean, <laughs> after, after, sorry, 40 years after it was supposed to be been made, it's just, yeah, it, it looks so, so bad. But they've actually done a poster for it now, and it is Charlie Sheen, George Clooney, Laura Dern, they are like the main people on the poster, <laughs> and you know they're going to have like two minutes of screen time and get killed, it's just like, yeah, crazy. Uh, I'm in. Sign me up. Sign yeah, me honestly, up. I'm right with Sasha here because I feel like, yeah. listen, what sells in the world? Sex sells. We know that. Money motivates people. And what else? Freaky, crazy, probably gen- genetic. Killer bears. <laughs> bears animal. don't sell. <laughs> and a condor did it. We've had the piranhas doing it. We've got the bears doing it. The shark. There's a reason the whole sharknado thing just took off. Like, like a the bear did it in the revenant we've seen it Dude, that's it exactly. there's, there, there's an audience can deal with it listen i'm down i guarantee you this drunken shit i'd want to watch i like, guarantee you this now. if the captain of the ship was here if joby cannon was here <laughs> he'd be balls deep in trust me he'd be on my side he'd be like a bear killing people in the park that's so dumb i want to watch it because that's yeah that's the that's the that's the humor, man. I love films like this. Oh, yeah. Fuck it. I you, wished you I thought. Enjoy. You I, enjoy actually, I actually wished I thought about this because I would have made this. Seriously. If it hadn't have existed, I would be like, 
Well, you put yeah. us down in a bear suit and run Yeah, around. man. I would have done it straight up. Made it like some evil dead shit, man. Would have shot it on Harrow on the Hill as well. Well, it's, 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 it's a nice short film. It's like 75 minutes, so you'll be all right. Oh, man. Sounds great. That's 75 minutes. I need to get this on Netflix, man. Is it coming out? Like this, this is it's coming out on streaming. I don't know which, which one, right. but we're going to have to find out. We're going to have no to find out. It's the type of it. nonsense, though, that you'd want to watch. It really is. You know, like, yeah, when I you have want a... that brain numbing, like after work, you don't want to think about anything. You don't want exactly. anything that's going to be too engaging. This is the type of shit you want. Yeah. A killer bear on yeah. your lips. Because you know when I read the, you know, when I read the topic, my brain went to the edge. Remember the edge? And the yeah. Hunter? That's yeah. what I was thinking. That maybe like until Canon op- you know, opened his mouth and told us it was a pile of nonsense that's going to come out. <laughs> it's like uh, a walking shark. It's like yeah. Sharknado. But in bear. Yeah. You know what? You know what? Speaking of nonsensical films, trust me. Um, you guys need to check the film, The Miami Connection. Just check that trailer. It's amazing. Okay. It's quite literally. They're this 80s boy band, not boy mm. band, rock band, and it's 80s. They're like teenagers, even though they're blatantly 30. Love and, <laughs> and literally, like one of their friends dies or something, and they've basically got Avengers death because they're also Kung Fu masters and they're going to take, uh, take down the ninja that killed him. It's nuts. Nuts. It's, it's nuts. It's nuts. It's crazy. It's got some sick martial arts, not really, but um, questionable martial arts and really amazing acting. It's so bad. It's great. <laughs> oh my God, I'm looking at it right now. Check it out, man. The poster's that, cool, though. But no, no, but check the end of the trailer. The end of the trailer, you're going to laugh your ass off so hard. I'm really? waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, people watching, Miami Connection, check it out. Ken, definitely watch it. Uh, <laughs> All right, cool. Ken's yeah. not impressed. <laughs> but yeah. Um, Anyway, if you want to know more about this Grizzly, they've actually got a website up. It's um, grizzly2revenge.com. Um, and they've done, the, they've done like the homepage. Like, it's like this official selection Hollywood Film Festival winner of merit. They've got all this bloody crap on it. Festival decans and all this shit. But then they've got like, it tells you about the cast, the crew, the history about the movie, synopsis. So yeah, there's a whole, there's a whole website dedicated to it. So yeah, check it out. Oh man! Right. <laughs> <laughs> I love the name of the website too. They're not holding anything back, are they? No, it's yeah. like even got George Clooney as Ron. It's like he's got a picture of him, like from the movie, obviously, like looking <laughs> like thirty years old. But it's like he's an American actor, producer, filmmaker, recipient of three Golden Globe awards, two Academy Awards. It's like they're selling it like it's now. It's so funny. <laughs> so it's, oh, it's crazy. Well, I'm- I'm actually looking at the fact that he hasn't pulled the uh, Keanu Reeves. Remember that movie he did in which I like, think the posters had they removed his name off and like anything to do with that film. Yeah. Actually, you must have remembered this and Keanu, you must have remembered this movie. I can't remember which one it was. Like they, well, the whole marketing had nothing to do with Keanu Reeves but he, as soon as you started watching it, oh, like 47 Ronin. Huh? 47 Ronin. Was it 47 Ronin? 47 Ronin because he was supposed to be a bit part and he was yeah. the only famous person on there in the cast. Right. And then the studio came and interfered with it, and they kind of tried to make him the main character. Right. And uh, <laughs> apparently the film's really bad. I've never seen it, but, like, Joe loves it. Don't know why. Oh, but, yeah. you know. I wouldn't say it's really bad. It's just not the normal standard that you'd expect. But it is actually enjoyable, though. It's not a bad film. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. I've not seen it. I, I need to check it out, though. It's got mm. Keanu. How bad could it be? Exactly. Saying that, saying that, one of my friends is in that film. My friend Mariano, he, he was in there. All right. Okay, Very moving cool. on. Moving okay, on. So David Fincher returns, and he's released the first images for his movie Mank, starring Gary Oldman and Amanda Siegfried, based on Orson Welles' Citizen Kane. Um, mm. I'm actually kind of looking forward to this because um, one, it's David Fincher because that guy hasn't done wrong since Alien Free, and um, <laughs> he hasn't done anything since Gone Girl. <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah. So you know, I'm I'm totally in, I'm totally in. But um, sit, the making of Citizen Kane, wow, that would be kind of good because like Orson Welles was quite an eccentric guy, but then this this film was like kind of like the beginning and kind of like. Yeah, the downfall and making of his whole Hollywood career, because if you know anything about Citizen Kane, um, 
that film more or less changed the way movies were made. Everything, yeah. every single, tr anyone that did film school ever would have heard of Citizen Kane. Um, if you've ever studied films, everyone refers back to Citizen Kane because you wouldn't have narrative storytelling in the way that we have in movies now if it wasn't yeah. for that film. Um, that film did so much for cinema in like one picture that the critics slammed it at its time because they didn't understand it. It was like so new. It was ahead then, of its time. Yeah, it was well ahead of its time. And you know what? When I was like 18 or 17 and I was at film studies, I watched it with my whole class and everyone was panning, panning it. And I was like, look, because it was old, it was like a black and white film. We'd never really watched a black and white film before. And mm. I was like, well, you know, there's a reason why they showed me it and I want to be a director. So, you know what I mean? I may not get it now, but I'll always remember it. And you know what? I own it now because... Um, I remember re-watching it on TV and I learned more the second time around by watching it because I was older and I could comprehend like what the fuck the director was doing with the frame and shit. And I was like, wow, this film is, and this came out when? And when you look at the films that came out then, it was so fucking good, man. It did so yeah. much shit. And that's the thing with Orson Welles. The whole thing with Citizen Kane was he came from radio and you guys must have heard the, um, what was it? The War of the Worlds uh, radio play that he did. Because, like, when that came on back in the 30s, it starts off with, like, a radio broadcast. Mm -hmm. And that, that radio broadcast, Americans thought there was an actual alien invasion. So people started killing themselves and getting yeah. tooled up and shit to fight aliens and stuff. People thought it was real. And because of that radio broadcast, that's what gave Orson Welles clout to go direct a movie. And he was, like, 23 at the time. And then basically, not just direct a movie, they basically said you did so much for radio in that thing that it caused commotion in the damn country. We're going to give you a blank check to do what you want. Just um, go make this film. And he went mm. and made that film and it bombed and critics hated it. And it kind of locked him in with whichever picture that uh, produced it. And basically he did pictures, you know, he basically spent the rest of his life doing studio pictures for him. And, you know, that's where he, yeah, obviously I know a lot about fucking Orson Welles. But most importantly, <laughs> most importantly, he was Gal, not Galvatron, Unicron. So, done. <laughs> <laughs> the most important thing he's done. But anyway, point being is, I want to see it. I think any, fil any film fan or film studies student should watch watch this film because we're definitely going to get an insight into the making of Citizen's Kane and what went on and how people probably thought Orson Welles was nuts because he was basically changing the game. So, yeah. yeah. Bit of a creative genius, definitely. Oh, yeah, totally. You should see him in interviews as well since because yeah. he's so charismatic because he's just kind of like, he's just kind of like, yeah, I just did what I want. I, you know what I mean? Like, he's just so blasé about shit and like... I liked Orson Welles, man. He was cool. He, he was definitely, like, anywhere you cut it, he was ahead of his time, 100%. Yeah. Because if he was around now doing what he was doing then, he would be your standard celebrity, frankly. Oh, but yeah, back totally. then, it was like, who the hell is this person? Changing the game. But I'm, I'm crazy excited because I think, yes, it's a, an amazing story to begin with anyway, and a very interesting thing. Like you said, any, any person that did film, like you said, knows this. Yeah. and knows all about it and I, I certainly am one of those people and I'm intrigued to see where they're going to take this but I also from the stills I've seen it looks really well kind of like the setting the mise-en-scene of it all looks really well done I'm excited to see Amanda Seyfried as Marion I mean the look is yeah it's a great it's a great look I'm excited anyway you cut it you know what my favourite Orson Welles film he directed is, though? It's not actually Citizen Kane. It's actually Touch of Evil. Mm. Touch of Evil. I fucking love that film, man. With Charleston Hexen, Heston playing a, playing a fucking... Um, what's he playing? He's playing a Mexican. <laughs> a Mexican? <laughs> He's playing, the lead character's a Mexican, but it's actually Charlton Heston, like, pretending to be Mexican. But mm. it's a really good film, man. Check it out, man. Check it out. Um, but that's like if people that listen to us actually want to go back to 1930s films. There's a lot of good 1930s <laughs> films, man. Seriously. There are. But none like Citizen Kane. Yeah, true. <laughs> true. I've not seen Citizen Kane. It's actually on my list right there. I'm looking at oh, it right see, now. You got, I put see, it on there to watch, but I haven't got the chance to watch it. I'll probably watch it tonight then. I'll yeah, do, do it, man. Do it. It's a good film. Yeah. Oh, it's not that long. All right, cool. You ever see Citizen Kane, Ken? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's. I don't know if it's one of those movies that is just more hype, and it comes with a lot of previous prestige. But I, I thought it was good, but it didn't didn't blow me away. It's like the greatest movie of all time. Um, uh, but yeah, um, one of the awesome world's movies I like is um, the Third Man. Yeah, the Third yeah. Man's really good as well. You know, so. <laughs> Yeah, but um, yeah, I mean, in terms in terms of this movie, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. Like like we said, you know, he hasn't uh, the director hasn't been around for a little while. David Fincher, his last movie he did was two thousand fourteen Gone Girl. Um, he's directed episodes of Mind Hunter. Um, Not that sure. Between then, um, he did Justin Timberlake and Jay Z's suit and tie video. If you wanted to know, uh, he did the first two episodes of House of Cards as well. So. Um, he's the producer of the show, isn't he? Yeah, then I think he went on to be, went on to be executive mm. producer for that. So, um, so yeah, you know, he very, you know, he normally picks his movies quite carefully. They're always quite generally quite dark, uh, mysterious in tone. Um, this one, because it's about the writing of, um, it's mainly about the guy who wrote or yeah. co-wrote um, Citizen Kane, as in he went and took um, the script um to what's his name um just been talking about him awesome wells awesome wells he took it and he like kind of rewrote it mm. and then the film went on to win oscar and it won the oscar for best like screenplay so mm. then they both took home the oscar kind of thing so it will be interesting how they you know what kind of story they're trying to tell is it going to be from the point of view where this guy was potentially robbed because all his ideas were taken away or is it a collaboration so yeah it's going to be interesting to see how it kind of works out especially considering the film is is named after him mac yeah it, yeah. it will be interesting to know what perspective they've taken exactly yeah, yeah. i agree yeah it's, 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 it, i don't know it's mankiewicz or i don't know how it's pronounced mm. but gary oldman's playing that character um and um tom burke is playing awesome wells Mm-hmm. Um, and if you if you look at him, it's like yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I think again with Gary Oldman, I mean, when the hell can you go wrong with him? Let's be honest. Yeah, exactly. He's he's literally probably one of the best actors of all time, hands down. So yeah, no matter what he does in this, he's going to be amazing. Mm. That's true. Okay, so the next film. We got, okay, so Ben Wheatley, director Ben Wheatley has been talking up his adaptation of the movie Rebecca, which is a remake of the Alfred, Alfred Hitchcock classic. Hitchcock. Yeah. Hitchcock. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, claiming that it's not a remake. It's not a remake. Um, his exact quote was, it's not in any sense a remake of the Hitchcock film firmly not remaking a film is not that interesting to me but the original source material is I watched all adaptations it's mm. important to see what's gone on before but that's certainly not the focus I wanted to make something that had more love in it it's part of trying to investigate other parts of being human Rebecca has dark elements and it has psychological it has a psychological and haunting story within it. But it's also about these two people in love, and that was the main thing. Um, okay. So he's remaking it, but looking more at the book. <laughs> well, he as a, he's, not remaking. But he's not remaking it. But he's looking no, at the book I as totally get material. that. It's um, not about Hitchcock's one at all. It's about the book, because the book yeah. is phenomenal. Yeah. Anyone who's read Daphne du Maurier's book will know it is a classic for a reason. And I think I, I totally get what he's talking about. I think Hitchcock obviously did his Hitchcockian thing and turned it into a horror, yeah. but it isn't necessarily a horror story. It's from, from my days working in a bookshop, the book was always not in horror, it was in standard fiction. Yeah. And that is because it is more of a psychological tale about what this woman is going through with her new husband, essentially, um, and how the haunting impacts the relationship. And, I, and also how she feels being feeling like the other woman in the house when really it's the first wife is dead so I'm, I'm interested to see what he's done with this because the story is one of my personal favorites cool. it's going to be interesting well i'm looking at this jane goldman is the one who actually wrote the uh, screenplay you know well, jonathan ross's missus the one who's done kingsman and everything else yeah, yeah. So he's directing it 
she's amazing. She is. I yeah. mean, X Men first class. Down to her. Exactly. <laughs> so I don't see her taking a Alfred Hitchcock way of uh, screenplay yeah. anyway. No. Her screenplays tend to be a little fast paced as well. So this should be different and interesting that way. And Ben Wheatley, I mean, his own, well, the way he directs films, <laughs> they are always unique. I mean, by mm. just watching them, you know it's him who's done it, by Guy Ritchie. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, Alfred Hitchcock, uh, I mean, he doesn't want to compare it because it was like Laurence Olivier. And yeah. he won Best best Picture of the Oscars in 1940, 41. Mm. So he doesn't want a comparison to that because he doesn't want his movie compared to Alfred Hitchcock anyway. But like Emery said, you know, he's, he's saying it's off the, the source material. Um, I believe the trailer drops tomorrow. Um, <laughs> so they did a little tease this morning. It's a Netflix movie as well. Oh. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll have to we'll have to see see what it brings. But yeah, um, I've not read the book, so I don't really know them. So I haven't seen the original movie either. Um, but it is one of those really well reviewed, long standing films that have been around. So people will inevitably compare it. Um, so good luck to them. I think I'm really excited about the fact that Ben Wheatley's directed it as well. I mean, his a lot of his previous films have been personal favourites. Free Fire is amazing. And oh man, I love that film, man. Free Fire like, is so as well. That was yeah. probably one of my favourite comedies of all time. So it's I, I, I best film. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I kind of wonder how he, he's obviously a perfectionist when it comes to like dark, like off mm. off the wall humour a little bit. And I'm wondering where that could, if it will, potentially fit into a story that's like this, that's quite emotionally driven and psychological. So it'll be interesting to see what he does with it, but you are right, someone that he definitely has his own, um, his own spin that is quite clearly his own. Yeah. It'll be exciting. Should be fun. Mm. And it's, I mean, it's coming in what, a month and a half, so not long to go. Listen, any film that's releasing now, I will just watch anything at this point. Well, yeah. There's Lockdown nothing has to do. killed me in that sense. <laughs> There's nothing else to do. I've been watching nonsense on Netflix and this and that. I'm like, why am I watching this? I've got nothing else to do. So I'm This is where the babysitters stuff. will fly because people yeah. just want anything to watch. But that's the problem with these sort of things because the Netflix is like, oh, everybody watch it. Let's make another one. Like, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just needed to <laughs> waste an hour and a half while I was cooking something. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Anyway, what's next on the target? What's next? Okay, next topic. Ridley Scott is at it again. He's talking okay. alien. He's talking alien. Talking more aliens. Just... Yeah, his exact He's words. He's really something, isn't he? Hasn't he? Or is he about to release something? Uh, yeah, he was talking about his HBO Max series, right. uh, Ra Raised with Wolves, which looks really good, I think. I like the trailer. Mm, that does. It does look intriguing. Um mm. But yeah, his exact quote on Aliens is, that's in the process. We went down the route to try and reinvent the wheel with Prometheus and Covenant. Whether or not we go directly back to that is doubtful because Prometheus woke it up very well. But, you know, you're asking fundamental questions like, has the alien himself, the face hugger, the face, the face hugger, the chest burster, have they all run out of steam? Do you have to rethink the whole bloody thing and simply use the word to franchise? That's always been the fundamental question. Now, thing is with Prometheus and Covenant, the whole idea was to not do an alien film, to do something that science fiction and horror, but set in that universe. But the minute you hear Alien, obviously there's the audience's certain sort of expectation. I felt I liked Prometheus a lot, despite its flaws. I felt its biggest flaw was showing to the dumb people, oh, look, there's an alien at the end. It's connected. You know what I mean? I didn't, I admit, that would have made the call like um, after the credit scene, I felt, rather than thrown it in right at the end. But Covenant, I just felt was dog shit. Um, Joe and Leo would differ here. They'll be like, no, you don't understand it. I was like, well... Oh, no, I differ from you. I, I mean, yeah. I have... I'm not going to say that is what I call... The reason why it's good is because it fits in somewhere. Yeah. The only reason I say it's just okay or good is because 
I had fun watching it. That's it. Yeah, no other, fair enough. No other argument. <laughs> fair <laughs> enough. I, 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 I didn't, I didn't really enjoy it at all. But um, mm. you know, smarter people, smarter people did, and you know, that's good for them. Um, like Joe and Leo. Um, but yeah, um, I get his comments. I mean, like, if you're gonna do it, you've got to show something new. You know, obviously. Um, whether he does it, that's the thing. Is he going to do something new with like um, what they were doing with the engineers and stuff, or is he going to do a different sort of alien film? I don't know where you could go with this franchise personally because I'm not thinking shit up. And the thing is, his deal with Fox was to do eight more, and he was talking about doing eight more around the time of yeah. Covenant. I uh, think. And, I think um, you and I and Kanan here, we had this conversation on another podcast. Yeah, that's right. Just a month ago or so, maybe yeah. a month and a half ago, about reviving franchises and, uh, and what I call expanding them. Yeah. And I think Alien was one of the topics. And we sort of ended up with thinking get that if there's no new idea, it's just repeating the same thing again. Yeah, sure. Exactly. If it's repeating the same thing again, I think half of us will be perfectly fine if the nothing else came <laughs> because I, don't I think, think yeah, go like, ahead. I was just gonna say I think the thing is like I, I Sash probably knows this but I am absolutely not a fan of Prometheus or Covenant at all there you I, think I have a lot of respect for Alien as a series on its own anyway pre-Prometheus hmm. um, and I understand a lot of the reasonings and the concept of Prometheus and I actually respect them a lot I think what they what he wanted to do initially is a fantastic thing. And I would have liked to seen it had it been probably done a little bit more in a professional way, dare I say it. I feel like there were many, many, many flaws in the way that Prometheus was told. And Covenant, I'll be honest, I didn't even bother watching. I was that cheesed off with the series. And I, I live with my brother who is obsessed with the two films, has watched yeah. them countless times. And he is always telling me, oh, you should rewatch them, you know, get a different perspective on them, blah, blah, blah. This, have you, don't you remember this bit? And don't you remember that bit? And wait, wait, me, which two films? So Prometheus and, and Covenant. Oh, okay. I thought you were yeah. talking about Alien and Aliens. Yeah, no, no, no. That's, that's my so jam. He, he loves those two. He loves those two, but I also oh, okay. love those. There's <laughs> no perspective when it comes to Covenant. There's nothing. It's exactly. People running around in jungle. That's it. Exactly. That's the reason I like about it is because it reminds me of that first scene of Rambo. Yeah. After we became complete <laughs> shit, you know, and nothing else happened. That amazing scene, and then you know, that was it. Exactly. That was the whole part, point of the whole movie, really. Those <laughs> two movies just blend stuff. together for me. Did, sorry, yeah. Yeah. those two movies blend together. I could, I, I could, I could probably tell you roughly what happens in each one. Yeah, they're, uh, yeah, yeah. probably not. We cross over a lot. Yeah, but you're right about this. There's nothing substantial about. It. I mean, like, if you look at Confident, then you go, okay, fine. I see what he's trying to do here. Yeah. And you see, it's essentially, it's like, it's like, the, okay, let's take another franchise and tear it apart. Star Wars. You remember the, the, the this, what I call the first one that just came out by Disney, right? It was a Force part Awakens. Seven yeah. or something, right? Yes. It was a compilation of all our favorite scenes from all our favorite Star Wars, the original three. Yeah. All the things that we love from the Return of the Jedi, from the, you know, Empire Strikes Back and actual Star Wars, they were thrown in together and made this space, essentially. And that's what Prometheus, uh, oh, sorry, Prometheus was. It was small tidbits that we liked of aliens instead of having the alien. Yeah. We had that. I mean, that's the biggest problem with that whole movie because alien wasn't actually there, right? It was essentially yeah. tiny babies running around and they're running, you know, away from that. And that was it. So essentially... Dude, if, they, feel, if they can make more money, fine. But otherwise, leave it alone. <laughs> I feel like it's deeper than that, though, as well. Like, I had a real problem with the way Prometheus was edited. Uh -huh. A massive problem with it. There were mm. so many things that just felt, like, not properly um, rendered, not properly finished or explained. Or Rushed? Yeah, exactly. And I feel yeah, like this I is know exactly what you're talking about. about. If, if you yeah. don't have a clear, perfect idea and... Yeah you can't execute it the way you actually want to do it, then don't fucking bother because we're, especially with a story that follows along something like Prometheus, if you're talking about like man's creation and potentially where we come from and you have the role for once in your life as a director to potentially play God, 
then do it fucking properly. That's no, but the thing, that's the thing. Prometheus, what it essentially promises you, they'll give you a lot of information regarding the backstory of, you know, because that's what we all went for. I mean, we don't live in that world. We live outside. We know what the hell those movies are going to be about, right? It's been sold yeah. and marketed and all that nonsense. And you go there, and the first 10 minutes, it kind of gives you that feeling. And then the rest of two hours, nothing happens because they're just killing each other, right? Yeah, well, and then the, the last the, the five minutes... The cut scenes explain a lot more. So there's, there's a cut scene to it that tells you a lot more about the origins and stuff like that and actually makes the rest of the movie make a lot more sense. So yeah, yeah. There, is actually, there is actually an extended cut of it as well. Yeah, by that's what it. I've heard. Oh, and right. and okay. yeah, because like they had, obviously they had it down for theatres because obviously Fox wanted to get as many butts on seats and stuff, right, right, which is right. kind of, which is kind of that. Maybe the extended cut might explain, well, see, explain you're sort those of problems. You're sort of but, asking yeah. for people to rewatch in a different form when they yeah. sell it later on. Mm -hmm. exactly. show up in the theaters, right? So you yeah. just watch the first five minutes, you got the gist, then mm -hmm. they land on the planet, and then horrible things happen. And then they, the whole story through that whole, well, there's no story. The whole thing you're, you're looking at is the guy who sent them there faking his death. He was on the damn ship, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's not right. what the story is about, really. Yeah, but that's, that's what we're watching. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then at the last five minutes, we'll go like, oh, no, no, they came from a different place, and now she's going there. And you're like, oh, you know, You know God. what it is? I, what I wanted from Covenant? At the end of Prometheus, she's walking around with fucking Michael Fassbender's head. Yeah. yeah. I wanted That's the nice. movie where it's just her and a talking head walking away oh, from aliens. Because she's like, like she, and, yeah, because uh, she was like, what she was Tom like, Hanks with Wilson, yeah, man, because she was like, she was like, yeah, we're going to go find that home world, isn't it? I that was like, cool. great. So I, would, I, I, I just had in my mind, like, a film with her and a talking head. Fuck it, I'm going to make that film. i got to figure why there's a talking head, though. If we could come yeah, up I with mean, an idea, send it my way. Um, yeah, I mean, Ridley Scott should just leave this alone now. I mean, yeah, someone yeah. else do something different with it. Because, you know, when he's not doing it, you know, like, I really enjoyed The Martian. I really enjoyed All the Money in the World. Yeah. Um, you know, those are two films he did, like, his last couple of films, which were fantastic. And, you know, his new film that he's got coming up, uh, The Last Duel, that's got like amazing, amazing cast. It's got Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, Adam Driver, um, mm. you know, and uh, Jodie Comer. It's got, you know, fantastic. And it's like, look, just make these movies, man. Mm. You know, because he executive produces the hell out of everything. Yeah, he, that's right. he's Because he, um, he's doing like a, um, um, was it like a Blade Runner team? Can I tell you a secret? Can I tell you a secret? Well. The executive producer is not a producer, it's a job, but a title. It's the fact that his company's making it, his name will automatically come Oh, yeah, come yeah. Out. So yeah, yeah. But he's got, that's the same. he's got his name attached to so exactly. much. Exactly. If your company makes it, the perfect way to put your name on it, <laughs> to sell it, is put your name on it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And, I uh, think there's, a, there's always a danger well, Gladiator of Gladiator like, 2 as well, right? You're supposed to be doing that as well. Which one? Mm. Gladiator 2. Uh, I think they just put that on there just for the sake of it because, like, they, they were talks like years ago, but it's nothing really serious. Russell Crowe mentioned it recently as well. He's yeah. like, it's kind of a dead project at this point. IMDb need to update their shit, man. Um, yeah. But what was I going to say? Um, now that Joe's not here, <laughs> a few years ago, because Joe yeah. hates this idea, yeah. a few years ago, um, before Chappie came out, well, but no, around the time of Chappie, Neil Bloomkamp, because Sigourney Weaver was in Chappie, Neil Bloomkamp put up some fan art that he did on his Instagram showing showing Michael Bean as Hicks. No, yeah, as Hicks. Is it Hicks? Yeah, Michael Bean as Hicks. Mm. Um, you know, with scars from the acid burn. And, and Newt. And Sigourney Weaver for a version of Alien Free because he wanted to do the true Alien Free yeah. with right. Sigourney Weaver because apparently he's had this idea since he was a child and shit. He pitched it to her and she mm. fell in love with it and she was like, I'm in. Mm. And the only reason why this film never got made is because um, Ridley Scott was in Prometheus Land and he's because he has a lot more stay over at Fox and stuff, he was like, well, no you know, no, basically, I want to do my yeah. shit. Thing is, I think real Alien fans, we love Sigourney. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think across the board, I mean, Alien 3, you know what? It's it's not a terrible movie. It's just not the movie we wanted at the time, you know? Rewatching it now and knowing, yeah, what goes on, 
yeah, it's okay. It's okay. But obviously I can remember at the time when it came out, it was so like, oh my God, they fucked wow. up. It's not as good. All I, can you, say you're, all I can say is you're more forgiving than me. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to tell you what happened to Alien 3. I've seen it multiple I, times. I, I actually watched it in preparation for Covenant. Okay, but oh, I watch. Why? <laughs> yeah, uh, why not? I have, I have them on, I have them on Blu-ray. The one I couldn't finish was Alien Resurrection. I watched like ten minutes of it. I was like, I'm out. I'm checking out. Any um, of the aliens are still better than Prometheus and Covenant, but, though. But I mean, um, but I mean, um, I remember playing a drinking game with the Alien versus Predator because he just wanted to see how many people died of that, how many people, you know, much you can drink. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was I mean, a dumbass movie as well. <laughs> Well, I mean, I would you guys have preferred? You... Would you guys have preferred Neil Bloomkamp's version over Li- Ridley Scott? Oh yeah, totally. I would have, yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Kenan. Yeah, totally. For me, um, uh, even because they they did a bit of um, at the Aliens 30th anniversary um, Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con, and they let a few tidbits out there of what might be in the movie, and even like James Cameron was saying from what he's read, because it wasn't a full script, but yeah. he said, you know, he said, it's amazing, he performs fan service and it should be made. He was all on board. Weaver was on board, you know, and, you know, he was a Xenomorph, so he was going to have new, you know, new going back to those and have new versions of those. And yeah, it's going to be the Alien sequel that should have been in a sense. And yeah, that, I think, I think people would have enjoyed that much more and it would have relayed much more box office success than Ridley Scott's stuff. So. Agreed, yeah. I, I mean, think I've... the issue is when you start doing something that's like a pet prep project for you mm-hmm. and there isn't actually something that you're thinking about what the fans want and mm-hmm. need in a franchise, you're just doing it because it's something you feel is a, is a passion project for you, but not really delivering on it. And I think Ridley Scott is like erring on that territory right now, where if he just continues to do this, there's absolutely no need. I think I've read this card as being greedy with the thing is simply that he yeah. it's just his, he wants it, he wants to keep it to that sort of a thing. Because I think, I mean, if, uh, what's his name, Bookman, or Bokum, or whatever his name is, the uh, South African. Um, I think oh, you would have brought a lot of fresh air. Yeah. yeah. I think he would have brought a lot of fresh air to, I mean, s- sort of reignite the whole thing. It would have been quite different. Because look at his movies, are, they are somewhat of blockbusters, but they're quite different to the average sci-fi movies mm. i mean you watch them you know it's them it's the same thing he has his own signature but it's not only that it doesn't have the same let's say uh algorithm or let's say formula to make a sci-fi movie mm. that yeah, most, I know what, uh, what i call uh, hollywood movies make anyway ah uh, should we move on to another one <laughs> yeah <laughs> Zack Schneider plans Army of the Dead prequel and anime over at Netflix. How how excited are you guys for Zack Schneider's Army of the Dead? Is the prequel to which one? I can't remember which one he's done. Is it the Dawn of the Dead? He did the Dawn of the Dead remake. That was his first film, and I really enjoyed right. that. That's the one with Vink Rames. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. that. But the Army w- of the Dead is is a prequel to which movie? Army of the Dead, the one from the seventies. No. No, 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 no. I think this. I think this is like a new kind of thing. I don't think it's connected to the old films and stuff. I just think it's another zombie film. It might. Right. I, I'm not too sure if it carries on off of Dawn of the Dead or set in that same universe, being his right. Dawn of the Dead. Right. But I know he's doing this zombie film for Netflix. Um, mm-hmm. Looks like they've signed him for a prequel to this current one that he's bringing out. Um, oh. Do we need more zombie? Do we need more zombies? And how excited are you guys for? Um, Army of the Dead. I don't know. I, I, I mean, just don't think zombies can do it. Zombies don't do anything for me anymore. I think yeah. um, The Walking Dead just killed my passion with those, and I gave up on that. Se- I gave up on that series. I think I got to like season. Maybe I can't even remember now. Six or seven, and I was just like, I'm trying to stick with it because I've been loyal, and then I just gave up. I just like, I don't care. I think I watched it up until um, Rick was in it, and then that was it. And yeah, you know, World War Z and everything else, it's, it's in COD games. It's, I, you, can't, I, you can't really show me anything new now for zombies. And it's just, um, you know, I guess it depends on the premise. But yeah, I can't say I'm excited for this. Like I said, I haven't seen any of the, um, any of these, uh, the, I haven't seen Army of the Dead and I haven't seen 
Dawn of the Dead or anything like that. So um, oh, you never saw um, Zack Snyder's first one? No, no. I oh have. man, that is a good film. I'll, I'll tell you this. I haven't seen Dawn of the Dead, Evil the Dead, nothing, none of these dead films. So wow. <laughs> I don't care. I recently saw a couple of them. It was, was like Teachers versus the Zombies or something. I mean, they were all comedies, really. I don't think they did like a lot of money on the uh, cinemas or anything like that, but they were a lot fun to watch because it was more about comedy than, you know, being afraid of zombies and stuff like that. I don't think I'm, ex- I'm, I'm like Ken here. I feel like it's oversaturation. Yeah. When yeah. it comes to zombies, what the, the kind of more interesting thing that I found was the White Walkers in Game of Thrones, and yeah. then look what happened to Game of Thrones. <laughs> so I just I don't, don't think I care about things. All, I want, so all I want from zombies, all I want from zombies is real Resident Evil done properly as a damn movie. Am I going to get it? No. No. I'm not going to get it. I know Netflix are rebooting it. I can't because they're butchering it again, man. Netflix are rebooting it and they fucked up with that opening statement with where they're going with it. I'm like, where's my Chris Redfield? Where's my Claire Redfield? Where's Mm. my Wesker? Wesker has children. That guy can't breed. That's almost (laughs) as ridiculous as Palpatine having children. I mean, what the fuck? (laughs) Oh, God. And my fan, the fan, the Resident Evil fanboy in me went nuts last podcast. So I was like, you guys had one job. It's like, get the fucking game. Just follow the fucking game. Just cut the fat. Just follow the game. I want to see zombie dogs. I want to see fucking massive shotguns. I want to see a damn minigun. And I want crazy ass monsters that people have never even conceived before. And, and, and they failed. They failed. And I haven't even seen a trailer. I just know they failed because it's like, the opening announcement they did on that whole thing, I was just like, well, this isn't based on the game. This is someone goes, oh, zombies. I've got an idea for a zombie film. I'm going to make up my own characters. And it's like, exactly. that's not they, what fans want. easily done, like what Silent Hill did and actually made... Oh, really man, Silent good Hill was film. so good. Silent Hill's <laughs> incredible. Like, honestly, like, yeah. it's... Yeah. yeah, such a good film. And Wait, there so, was a second one? Yeah. Oh, that must have been bad. We just won't speak oh. about the second one. <laughs> but the first one is so incredibly immersive. Yeah, and yeah. it really, like, the horror just is coming to life as you're continuing through this world. And yeah. if Resident Evil had done even remotely that amount of effort, it would have been amazing. But they just, you know, they savagely let it down. Man, I hate, I hate well. those films, man. Those films, it was like, this is supposed to be a horror movie. Why is it an action movie? And who the Anna fuck Thomas. is... And who the fuck is Alice? Who the fuck is Alice? She ain't no game. <laughs> Why is she the main character? Why is she doing Kung Fu? Where's this chick in the game? Oh, wait, wait. Second film. Oh, Jill Valentine's in it. Okay, they finally got a character. Jill Valentine died. All right, I'm out. Did she die? <laughs> I don't know. I made that up. But you know what? After <laughs> All I remember was, all I remember, there was like, they had the tyrant. Sorry, I'm going into a thing. Ken don't know what I'm talking about, but I can tell. No, it was Nemesis. They had the Nemesis creature. I was like, oh, Nemesis is in this. And then they had Alice having some love story with the fucking Nemesis creature. And Joe walked out the cinema. Joe was like, I'm out. (laughs) I'm gone. I'm out. What the fuck was that? And I was like, wow, Nemesis. They're trying to make Nemesis have a heart, man. What the fuck? (laughs) What the fuck? This is whack. I'm out. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and I followed I, I Joe just, 10 minutes later. <laughs> it's definitely just like the franchise that someone just decided they wanted Mila Jovovich to be in everything. Oh yeah, her husband her, her husband directs know, like, all those films. No, but exactly, that's my point. <laughs> There's nothing to do with, with the game. It's nothing to do with anything credible. It's nothing to do with horror. It's just a showreel for her doing... Yeah, that, I mean, they made money and that's why they kept on making it. I mean, we can all moan and yeah. cry about it. As long as they keep on making money... Yeah. I mean, that's the thing... the first Resident Evil and that was it. Yeah, that, that's yeah. the thing. But you yeah. nailed it on the head, though. I mean, those films were really cheap to make. Yeah. And as long as they made a profit and made and some... I think and unfortunately... The Kate Beckinsale movies, which were they? The... Underworld. Oh, uh, Underworld, yeah. Underworld. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, there were like 10 of them, right? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, Michael Sheen was in one of them, and they kept on moving and making because. Whoa, whoa, wait! Did you just say Michael Keaton was in one? Michael of them? Sheen. Oh, I thought you said Michael <laughs> Keaton. I was no, like, no, no, wow, I might actually watch one of these. <laughs> <laughs> no, Michael Sheen was in. Well, what I'm saying is that it's simply they were cheap to make, yeah, and totally. that, you know, millions of people watched because 
It wasn't compared to anything. I mean, you can't compare because there's no comic yeah. books. So there's nothing. They can't complain about it. Yeah, they can make being, up any nonsense anytime. That being and said, better, as yeah. much as I hate the Resident Evil films, they have found an audience because I know people yeah. that are like, I love those films. They're my favorite films ever. No, but and guys, anything the gamer will find dies. an audience. <laughs> yeah. Anything will find an audience. That doesn't mean that it no, should be. No, significantly a large movie. audience. Significantly large audience. Look, look at like Saw and other franchises that just don't give up. They just don't quit. Yeah, There's that, a, that I mean, is true. Yeah. <laughs> You know what? On that note, on that note, okay, so everyone's bored of zombies. Do we need a vampire revival? I think they've been no, way too sparkly. I think they've been way too sparkly for so long. I think we need to go back to the 80s, 90s kind of raw yeah, kind of blade bring style. Bring back tremors, you know, yeah. the things you can't see. Yeah, man. We should have some fuck Remember that? that? I, I'm happy to leave vampires alone until we get our new blade. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> mm. Do you think do you uh, see but do you yeah. see Blade being any good? I mean, like in the 12A MCU universe? I mean, like, yeah. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I can't see, for me personally, I cannot see a watered down Blade. For me, if I was going to be impressed, I'd want it to be 18 or 15 at least. Yeah. And going On what basis? Just for blood? No, just hitting the horror vibe of what, what Blade is, man, and the action vibe. Otherwise, I'm just going to be constantly comparing it to the old stuff. You know, they really got hit out the park with that. I like who they casted, though. I love Mah Mahashala Ali. He's mm -hmm. a great actor. I didn't know Choice. they cast him. That's amazing. Yeah, they yeah. cast him. You know, I didn't what? Know there was you know what? Kevin Feige watched Battle Angel Alita and was like, there's Blade. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I'm sorry. When I saw him in that trailer, I was like, oh, shit, it's Blade. That's yeah. the new yeah. Blade, right? right there and like um i i don't know how they're gonna do it to be honest or maybe they're not gonna do it and maybe they're gonna have him cameo in like stuff like dr strange and stuff and spider-man where you can go 12a i don't know i just don't see an 18 rated blade by marvel personally because it doesn't hit their thing but then maybe deadpool might bring in a might open the door to that depending on what they do yeah, with that because it'll be a yeah, yeah. It's a decision they're gonna have to make in terms of can they have some movies which don't necessarily tie into the mcu phase storyline mm. um but have the character dip in and out so you know you could have deadpool in your mcu universe yeah but just not the r-rated version you know he yeah. could be but it's about that fourth wall break so what they'll need to do is they'll need to separate the fourth wall break and him being self-aware to fit into the MCU. Yeah. Um, I mean, he can still swear and do everything he wants to, as long as he doesn't use like five, six words and that's it. I mean, he as dirty as possible if he likes. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. you're allowed a few F-bombs and stuff in like PGs these days. It's, mm. you know, you know, one, you know, one, one F-bomb. Yeah, then there's those different words. But, you know, he, he'll... <laughs> you kind of want to see him in the MCU to be self-aware, to make fun of things, and you could even have him being beeped out, but then it takes away from the MCU universe. Oh, and just, yeah. it, it wouldn't happen. It's not going to happen. So, mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, whether you see him in cameos, like you say, in like a Doctor Strange thing, where, you know, you just see him in the background or cut in, cut out. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but in terms of Blade, that is, I see what you mean by the character in terms of, a 15 at least would be yeah. good, but would they push I don't it? see it. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Go I, for didn't expect money. To, I didn't expect, I didn't expect to talk Blade, but hey, I guess that shows we had very little to talk about Army of the Dead, eh? <laughs> well, none of us had any interest in zombies. Army, Army, of the Dead was, Army of the Dead was supposed to be a sequel to Dawn of the Dead, which was a remake. Right. Yeah, but then it's not a sequel. It's its own thing. It's like a heist movie. I mean, it's got Batista in it. Fair enough. I'm in. Uh, <laughs> and then, but then he's got. But then that hasn't even come out yet. And now they're talking about doing a prequel to this one, as well. So yeah. that that just infuriates me. Yeah. Same. Why are you talking about doing a prequel to a movie that hasn't even come out yet? Just tell your story linear. Stop going backwards and forwards. Exactly. Exactly. It's all a ploy so they can just make like another tagline on the next poster or yeah, trailer. Yeah, at least they can kill someone off and then bring them back again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. moving on. Jason's uh -huh. statement. Jason's statement. What's wrong with me statement. today? <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Jason's statement. I I'm getting tongue-tied today. Jason's statement. Jason Statham. 
and Guy Ritchie reunite for a spy thriller called Five Eyes. Mm. You know what? I'm just excited to see Jason Statham in a in a Guy Ritchie film again. I mean, like, yeah. those guys haven't jammed since Snatch. Am I correct there? Or, or Revolver? Revolver. Revolver, I think, yeah. Yeah, Revolver yeah. and Revolver. Um, <laughs> i got to ask you something, Salman. What did Yo. you think of Revolver? It's just a boring slick, really. I mean... Okay, you're the first American I know that said that it was boring. Most most of you guys are like, oh my God, it was so great. It was, it no, was fucking it was... sophisticated. I'm like, what? <laughs> I, was, I mean, my true feeling is that like, when I first watched it, I remember thinking, I need to get high so I can't watch this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I went out in the parking lot and I got high. And I came back. I'm not joking. Because it was horrible <laughs> see the thing is there's a difference i watched lock stock and two smoking barrels when it came out out not yeah. when it came out in the united states and it was oh, it dubbed it. <laughs> right i'm a buddy of mine what i call uh, well it was british and i used to live in the middle east at that time and when it came out here he bought the tape and he brought, he brought it there and we all watched it and we kept on looking at it and it was like translates this shit to me i mean really we don't know what the hell's going on but you know <laughs> we enjoyed from the get-go um, that said, I have no idea what the hell Revolver was even about, really. I can't even tell you. It was such a bad experience. I never bothered watching it again. It was so bad, Jason Statham lost his hair because that wig was fucking something. Oh, it was awful. <laughs> it, was, uh, it did not suit him at all. Who the hell told him to do that? I mean, I don't know, man. But I'm happy. Might, hmm. might have been a personal choice. You never know. Maybe. I know but if I'm I had the budget this. on my films, I'd have a different crazy wig every every <laughs> film. That would be my thing. Yeah. I tried to implement it in a short film. I can't remember which one, but I think it was one of Ken's ones. Ken did a short film and there was a crazy Jamaican wig and I put it on, sat in the background. No one could tell it was me unless <laughs> unless I said it was me. <laughs> <laughs> I just oh, remembered it because cool, everyone, everyone on the table was trying to like not piss themselves laughing because I was like in this big Jamaican wig <laughs> with dreadlocks <laughs> and stuff. I'm just glad Jason Statham like finally realized that the boldness is his thing. Yeah. Because it Embracing. works. Him. Exactly Embracing. works for him. I'm excited, I'm excited to about... see this film though, I'm not gonna lie. It's, no, it's I'm just excited about this top. because the guy who's written the film is the co writer of gentleman with Oh Harry. I love the gentleman. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So exactly. good. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's why they're doing it. Like you say, it's the co-writers, and they're actually there's actually a film coming out before them called Wrath of Man, which right. is also written by the guys who did The Gentleman, directed by Guy Ritchie, and mm -hmm. starring Jason Statham. So, oh. yeah. So if you actually watch, the, if you actually read the press release, they said you know it's going to be another collaboration following Lockstock and the upcoming Wrath of Man. Um, mm. So, so we're going to see him do that together before we even get Five Eyes. Amazing, amazing. Good, good. Looking forward to this. I, I was going to say, I think Guy Ritchie was, mm, dare I say, losing his cool a little bit until the gentleman. I think his, uh, the, the uh, what was the uh, the sword thing that he did? What was it Arthur? called? Scott, what, Arthur, yeah. I yeah. think um, it came out at the wrong time. I mean, the weekend it came out, there were like 20 massive movies. I mean, yeah. Disney movies came out the same week. So I don't think anybody really watched it. On top of yeah, it, it was very it Guy Ritchie movie. Good. It wasn't that right? good, though. No, no it, it was supposed to be a good. trilogy. It was supposed to be a trilogy and got delayed because they reshot, they re edited, they re edited that thing so many times because it just didn't play well with test audiences. And yeah. then eventually it got released. And yeah, there ain't going to be no sequel for that. But yeah. I think like, The Man from Uncle, that's like kind of underrated. I quite enjoyed that. Yeah, that's a really yeah. good yeah. yeah, I agree. I quite enjoyed that. Saying but, that I, though, but, I, but what about Aladdin? You know, he did that. You forget that. And he's in the, apparently he's going to do Aladdin too as well. Yeah, he is. Well, Aladdin did very well. I mean, I'm I'm a lot, guys, yeah. I was Aladdin a fan. did well though because it is a Disney thing. Yeah. So even though he's directed it, he, it's never going to be a Guy Ritchie film mm. because yeah. it's, it's Disney. It, didn't even, it actually didn't even feel like a Guy Ritchie film. No, exactly. I think about it. I think Guy Ritchie just let his first AD just go nuts with his DOP. And they were like, <laughs> we got this shit now. And he was just in the back count and the money and stuff. And, <laughs> no, you know, but, but if you look at the film itself, 
Yeah. There is a bit of garbage in it, and I'll tell you why. And you have to look at the scene um, sequences, the speed, the way to switch yeah. between oh, yeah, the robbery totally. scene and all that. They're all like, garbagey stuff. So he oh, yeah. did bring it in. It wasn't the language that we all are accustomed to when it comes to garbagey. That wasn't there. But there was yeah. no Cockney guy yapping and you know narrating. The language about. or the the like the plot, like the screenplay, obviously, because obviously, plot. yeah, obviously. But, but, but it I was refreshing. About- it was fast, and we all liked it. Yeah, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what I did like about it. Will Smith yeah. was great. Yeah. Will Smith was great. And you know what? I remember when they casted Will Smith. I even said back then, I was like, you know what? Like, he's no Robin Williams, but you can't have Robin Williams. You have no. to bring exactly. someone to do their own thing. And yeah. when they said Will Smith, I could see his, I could already see his version of it. And I didn't yeah. hate it. I didn't hate it. And... Mm. Obviously, when they showed that first trailer, it looked a bit uh, a pony. But then when you see the actual film mm. itself, he's actually the best part of the film, man. I actually really enjoyed yeah. his genie. And I didn't have a problem with him. I had a problem with Jafar. I had a problem with the lead actor that was Aladdin. That guy tried to moan how he wouldn't get roles. I'm like, yeah, because everyone saw you in Aladdin and realized you suck. You can't act. Sure, you could sing and you sounded like the cartoon character, but there's a difference, okay? Yeah. He was as wooden as Hayden Christensen was in fucking Star Wars, man. Like, I fuck. Wouldn't go that far. <laughs> I would. No, damn. I was brutal. I was like looking at this guy. I, I was like, bro. You're brutal on it. I didn't I was, mind him that much. The worst dude, thing. Yeah, I didn't mind him. Ah, Where did he go? Has Jafar, he else? Jafar was just a case of was also bad casting because like yeah. that guy, but they just casted a pretty boy and not like a creepy old man. Oh, wait a minute, who's Jafar? <laughs> Wasn't Jafar? Exactly, no one knows. Yeah, he exactly. Waste. He had no presence. Well, I remember as Naomi Scott, and I really liked her in that. He was film. fantastic. Yeah, yeah, mm. she was. She, she was, was cool. great, and she definitely looked Middle Eastern, which surprises me. At the same time, the film did really well because of the IP and people were curious to see Aladdin and stuff. And, you know, there's going to be Disney like sequels and Guy Ritchie likes money. And you know what? The <laughs> best thing, the best thing to come out of it was we got the gentleman. And, yeah, and exactly. Yes. It looks like because now he's playing the game before he was like trying to do like the next big franchise that would have multiple stuff. Yeah. And it just looks like, you know, he needed his Disney thing. So he can go off and do like stuff like the gentleman stuff like yeah. you know what I mean. Personally, I want a rock and roller too because we were promised, God damn it, and that I really like that film. film. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I did enjoy that, that film. film. Yeah. yeah, I actually recently during this pandemic rewatched all Guy Ritchie movies and oh, I rewatched so. Locks of New Smoking Barrels and man, I had completely forgotten about that film. And only that, I, I was finding it funny that the scenes looked new to me. But all the dialogues I knew by heart. Because I was repeating a lot of those things. Like, oh man, I must have seen this so many times that I actually remember the dialogue, but I've forgotten the scenes. What's your favorite? What's your favorite one? Yeah, me, me Snatch. too. Snatch is hands down my favorite. Which one? Snatch. That is a brilliant film, yeah. Mine. Uh, I, can't, I can't say. I mean, I'd probably say it's what I call Snatch, probably too, but I think Lockstock was. Because I saw it in high school, and it was sort of a, I guess, would be my favorite. And then I liked rock and roll as well. And Gentleman was really, really good as well. Yeah, Gentleman, like, I think has gone right up near the top for me. Yeah. You, know who, you know who really steals the show for Gentleman for me? Hugh mm. Grant. Yes. Hugh Grant just fucking smacked down that film, he, he's man. Amazing, isn't Thank that? God he stopped doing rom coms. I mean, we get to see that this guy can actually fucking act you know <laughs> i mean the english scandal was great the uh, man for month what can yeah. So oh yeah he yeah. was fun in that too I and forgot yeah, he was in that. brilliant too yeah. maybe you should do more guy Ritchie films he seems to get the best out of him <laughs> exactly <laughs> in a I, movie. <laughs> I really liked as well michelle dockery i think she was just not at all what i expect from her she was amazing in it going from like downton abbey to the gentleman she was phenomenal Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I've never seen Downton Abbey. Yeah, I mean, she yeah. she she was great in Downton Abbey. Don't get me wrong; that was a fantastic show. But she was obviously very well spoken, very posh. Yeah. Oh, okay. very Is like that, does she life. play the wife, right? Um, in um, Gentleman, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she's, she's with got, a little gun. Yeah. <laughs> she's definitely got some spice to her in this. I loved her in it. 
Okay, moving on. Last topic of the night. Hugo Waven explains why he's not back in Matrix 4. Due to a scheduling conflict with the, with a play, Lana Wachowski decided to re not recast, but create a new character for the film to make sure that filming hits on schedule. How do we feel about Matrix 4 not having... Well, you know what? I'm going to say both characters now because um, originally... We had an article Fishman. a few weeks ago, but Lawrence Fishman's no longer coming back. Neither is Hugo Weaving. Um, how do we feel about that? Do we need them? Or like, like I mean, for me, Lawrence Fishman is the only character that's alive, right? And, <laughs> and, yeah. um, and um, I'm shocked he's not back, but we got the two dead people. Uh, spoilers. And, uh, <laughs> uh, but no, three dead people. No. Yeah. Hang on, wait. We even died, right? He died. Yeah, they all died. Yeah, he they, died. They all died. But two dead people out of three. Hey, you, yeah, you but know. Hugo Egan, the agent, he was the one man. He yeah. was. He was. Can I can I ask um, the article you were for call you talking about? Uh, what does it say? Like, why isn't um, Lawrence Fishman coming back? Yeah. So basically, Hugo Weaving, he had a conversation with um, Wachowski, mm. and they, you know, he was originally going to be a part of it. She wrote him into it. Um, there's some parts that he likes. There were some other things that he wasn't too sure about. But yeah, he was doing this play and basically he said, look, these are all the dates I can do. If we can film all these together, I can do all this and I'll be happy to go ahead. And then basically she just didn't come back to him. And she, right. and she just, you know, then eventually it seemed like she wrote him out of the film. So whether it That's was... Savage. He took whether she took criticism of his thoughts about the character, about the movie mm -hmm. or the script or whatever it is, um, I don't know, but we know what Hugo Weaving's like. He doesn't like most things that he's in. He dissed Transformers yeah. and he dissed like Captain America and, you know, he, he, he like falls out with people. So it's not surprising. Um, mm -hmm. But I think it's a real opportunity missed. I think, yeah, Matrix without uh, those two in it, um, even, you know, even if he was in it briefly, um, I think it would have made a huge difference um, because, I mean, Keanu, from what we've seen on set, it looks like he's got his John Wick beard as well. He's just, and yeah, it just... I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. How about, how about Lawrence Fishburne? Did he say anything about it? They just didn't invite him back. Not, just not in it at all? Oh, just not invited back at all. Okay, yeah. cool. I'm okay with it. I mean, I don't mind it simply because it's been 20 years since, since that movie's gone. And uh, I mean, finished last. And so I'm hoping I'm not reminded of old stuff and may enjoy this movie by itself. Because mm. if you start comparing to the old ones, it's the alien Star Wars thing again. You know mm. what I mean? People go like, oh, I wish it was like this. I don't want that to happen. At least How for do you me. bring back Jada Pinkett Smith and not Lawrence Fishburne? <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. That's the thing for me. It's not so much Hugo Weaving. Wait, it's Lawrence she... Fishburne. No, he's no, wait, is... Miss. Is Jada Pinkett back? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, Carrie Ann Moss is back. Jada Pinkett Smith. Uh, Priyanka Chopra's in it. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> well. Uh... Our Indian girl traveled far. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's making um, it good now in Hollywood. Neil he Patrick is. Harris is in it. Um, <laughs> agent, <laughs> I'm calling it. He's the new agent. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's you can do a else he could play about. Seriously. Um, so yeah, I, yeah I, I don't know what to make of it. Um, oh, and Jonathan Groff is in it as well. But he's mainly known for like his singing and stuff like that. Yeah, um, yeah. And like, so like, I think he's done a bit of Hamilton and... Mm -hmm. Stuff. So, yeah, it's, it's a very diverse cast. Um, uh, it's actually got quite a few actors who are in Sense Eight. Oh, okay. as well, because that's a show I love. That was fantastic. Yeah. And if anyone hasn't seen that, that's by Wachowski's as well. Um, Sense Eight, brilliant, brilliant show on Netflix. Um, but yeah, there's a few characters from that which they brought in, um, which I can see because I, you know, I really like some of them in there. Um, Max Rimmelt, who played like the German guy and Australian guy, or whatever it is in it. So, so yeah. So, I never watched that. Say, does it finish or is it? Does, did it end? They did on like a movie thing? to finish it off. So probably not oh, okay. as much as they would have liked. Um, but yeah, but yeah, it's a fantastic. Yeah, it's it's very it's very strange to start with. So you have to give give it a couple of episodes to really get into it. But when it kicks mm -hmm. off. Man, it's, it's a great concept, and I think it's just executed very, very well. Yeah, I think so, I watched one episode and then stopped, so maybe I should pick it so up. So, it does, yeah, the first couple of episodes can be tricky. Um, 
but yeah once you power through it um because yeah the matrix four's also got um uh, yeah it's got quite a few i'm looking here now it's got quite a few of um sensei people in it so yeah watch sensei tell okay. you good show, good show. Yeah, I, I think I stopped after watching the first episode. I don't think mm -hmm. I've seen that. Yeah, the first first couple of episodes is it's 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 a little bit of a slog, but once you get past yeah. it, oh yeah. man, it really delivers. Cool. I think the thing with the Matrix is just like anyone who's really a diehard fan, knowing that the Wachowskis are still helm, you know, still at the helm, um, Keanu's in it, the rest are in it. I think regardless, we're all gonna watch it. Let's not pretend it's oh, gonna be yeah. It'll oh yeah. Be, oh yeah. Totally. It'll be great, regardless. Um, I'm actually thinking of the fact it's been 20 years, so there's a whole mm -hmm. new generation of people who have no idea what the hell Matrix is, and will be exactly. watching that. And it's going to pop all the first matrices are going to pop up on all our streaming services to us for watch mm -hmm. before the yeah. movie comes out. And let's try not to, <laughs> because then we'll <laughs> compare it, and that's not going to help. Yeah, but I mean, the the biggest thing for me is that it's not like you know, an alien situation where someone random is like, you know, picking it up or, or a Star Wars mm. thing where someone else has picked up the story from someone else. This is still the Wachowskis baby. And I, I hope and I pray that they will remain faithful to the story, but stick through with the characters and keep it as badass as it's always been. If they start to, I guess, try and adapt it to the audiences for now, trying to market a younger audience, mm. then I think they're going to screw this up a little bit but i'm hoping they stick true to what they've been doing with the whole franchise before mm. well. yeah i mean it's only one of the wachowskis who have come back it's uh lana, lana. Yeah. lana. Oh, only the she, one she, okay i didn't yeah. know that yeah it's only well, come back to direct and lana's co-written it um but okay. yeah there's only one of them's actually come back to direct yeah lily wachowski mm. didn't want to come back because she hates the way hollywood is run now Mm -hmm. um, her exact quote well her exact quote was she hates the idea of marketing people being on set and in editing booths and you know i mean making decisions mm -hmm. that should be clearly left in the marketing department rather than you know on the actual movie mm -hmm. and um mm -hmm. yeah well we all know why i agree with that um <coughs> rose <laughs> skywalker um <laughs> <laughs> yeah no fair play to her more of a credible argument to be fair yeah all right that's a wrap folks where can we find you ken uh you can find me on twitter um at ken and talks film uh for all your latest movie news amrita uh i am mostly just on facebook under my name amrita but and i have blue hair not that difficult to find or instagram under quirky turquoise and uh, salmon uh and I'm on Twitter and Instagram under Sal underscore F1. And if I haven't added you guys, it's because I keep forgetting I do a podcast. Usually I just add my friends. So I've got to remember this. But you can find me on Sashman Free on Twitter. I'm really sorry if I haven't accepted any of your stuff because I have started to get a few things. And like, it's not me, me being rude. It's like me actually genuinely realizing I do a podcast by myself now it's not really usually it was like always joe's thing mm -hmm. you know what i mean and yeah. i can guest on and like now that it's exploded because of this pandemic i've more or less become the guy without really it's kind of like accidental how it's all happened so that's so good. you are the guy i don't ever doubt it for one yeah. second appreciate those gang my friends he does yeah. gang it's appreciate <laughs> Appreciate exactly. the appreciate the love and like if anyone's messaged me i'll get back to you <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Um, All right. We're Zito's gang, and we're out. Yep. Out. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Go on, go on, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Come on. I am the man that killed Jamie Lannister.